And you were picked as national coach uh, a few yeah. times you went to Italy. Yeah. That must have been quite an experience. Ah, absolutely, you know, mate. It's Long pen- overdue. It's just a pinnacle of everybody, every trainer's uh, a career in order to look and see that, uh, you know, they're being appreciated and uh, took away as an international batching coach and you know what it's all about. Okay, you leave your own club far behind, but the experience you gain and see and hear uh, and what have you, you bring that back into your own club. So, you know, I always can say that I have an international Irish coach. Yes. Well, we're learning every day. You never stop yeah. learning. We're never learning stop day. learning. As you well know yourself, Manuel Stewart was asked, uh, Manuel, you know everything about training. So, and Manuel's answer was, no, I don't know everything about training. I'm learning every day. And I can walk into each small club and pick up something just, just like that. And it's the same for every coach. Nobody knows it every, everything, you know. Well, the modern facilities in this team were opened a couple of years ago, and the Celtic Warrior, yes. Stevie Collins, yes, yes, that's came true. on officially opened the club. You, you were quite impressed by him. Stevie Collins was an excellent fella, a really lovely fella. Uh, when we were going to open the club after we got the whole, all the showrooms uh, all sorted out, as you know yourself, you, know, you mentioned what it was like and what have you. Uh, we needed to get a celebrity, and I got his name, and I got a phone number. And then I phoned him up and I told him the whole ins and outs of the club and what have you. He said, he had no hesitation in saying, yes, I, I'll open the club for you. So when I met him, I was pleasantly surprised and I want to put in record. He came here and he spent two, over two hours that he never took one penny off his trip. And uh, you had the European and World Ladies Champion, Kitty Taylor. Yes, Kitty Taylor was absolutely That's amazing. very awesome and an inspirational you know, for the girls. If somebody talked that girl in the street wouldn't realise, hey... Uh, How tough. Hey, yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 What you would do. What you could do. Yeah. 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 So a lovely looking girl, yeah. very pleasant. And absolutely, absolutely. And as I say, uh, should win a Olympic gold. There's no such thing as, you know, yourself as... Uh, as uh, it's a going this game, now. You know? We are a wee bit of luck. This is more you know, than capable. Yeah. This is a best pound for pound, best in the world. If it maybe goes tomorrow, let's put it this way. You mentioned we went to the goal. And it's great to see the girls getting... Uh, well, this is what I'm going to come to. How are you going with the girls, Sean? Do you have money up here? Well, uh, it's been very hard to make girls. Because you, you know yourself, Eamon, from washing dishes and putting colours in their hair and, mm-hmm. and makeup. You know, it's very hard to get them into a... Uh, sore sport of getting punched in the face, you know. Yes. The makeup comes from bruises in here, right. now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so having maternal instincts to having that killer yeah, instinct, you know. This is it, now, this yeah. is it, you know. But see, once you get one of them uh, involved in it, now we girl we have is Sarah Jane McLachlan from, from our town. She travels up and down here. She would stay here 24 hours a day and the training was on. And uh, as I say, she's been beat uh, only by Irish champions. Right. And this was She's knocking on the door. Absolutely fantastic pair of hands. And uh, it's helped her in, immensely in, yes. in a lot of ways. And it's helped fellas in well, here. Well, that's what You appreciate yeah, yeah. what girls can Absolutely do. Absolutely confidence. In and she's one of the boys in here, you know. Right. She's not treated as a girl. Right. Uh, oh, she is, surely. Uh, but, but for a training standard, she, yeah. she's treated as one of the boys. Well, uh, it's very much a family affair here, Sean. Your daughter, Carla, treats yeah. the girls on Tuesday right. and Thursday. Yes. And your two sons, Sean... And yeah. Mark, yeah. along with yourself, train the boys. That's but you have some that's very willing assistants here too. You have yeah. some others. Uh, yeah. Eddie O'Neill. Eddie O'Neill. Who's that's been true. here since the early 70s yeah. too, isn't that right? Well, Eddie was here. Yeah. Well, we've got, got Paddy McGee, a uh, brother of him and McGee. And we've also got Joe McCarl. Joe McCarl won a couple of wee tales for us when he was a kid. And has come back to us from all them years ago. And this is what we find. All the kids would, would train years and years ago is coming back to us. We're actually training the grandsons of the guys who were yeah. were trained by us mm-hmm. when they were that's they what young. young. You know, yeah. and that's what's happening. Uh-huh. But I mean my big friend Eddie O'Neill, he's been with me uh, thirty five years. And I asked him one day, I seen him standing in the corner, would you come down and give us a horn? He said, ah, give us a horn for a, a couple of weeks and maybe you'll like it. You know, but that was thirty five years. Right, you know. And he told me so, he turned down a lucrative career in modelling. I would come here and train the kids. Is that no, true? That's true, but the only the only problem was he didn't couldn't get a wig big enough to fit his head. All oh, right, right. His head. Right. <laughs> well, uh, Randy, I always remember. I have some good memories here up in this club too. Uh, I remember Randy coming in nineteen eighty one. That's and true. The place was packed out, and Randy getting in the ring uh-huh. and singing and dancing uh-huh. and Popeye and all the boys in prison. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I thought he was going to embarrass himself. But he yes. was absolutely brilliant. He absolutely uh-huh. brought the house uh-huh. in. 
Well, uh, what I knew in Rene, to me, could, I didn't think he could ever embarrass himself because you, you had that celebrity um, bit of go about him, you know? Yes. I mean, I had two Bastion Cabarets up here and I hadn't faded him intensely till him. And the singing was absolutely fantastic from his voice. Yes. And as you well know yourself, he'd done that pop impression and that. Oh, I was And he was absolutely fantastic. And yeah. the people laughed and they sang along. And I tell you, uh, I just could not have had any better cabarets, you know, because he was fantastic. He took a couple of pounds of face off me. That's all he had. Totally. Another thing that's tattooed in my brain is uh, the night me and you were uh, playing pool. And my dad yes. was punching a big heavy bag, but he was yes. fully clothed, but yes. he was putting everything in it. And he must yes. have been watching us with one eye to see if we uh -huh. were watching him. And he'd deal around the bag, he but he took us all maybe swinging through a left hook uh -huh. and missed. And he must have spun around three times and fell on his face. Yes, that's you true. started chuckling, and I was... Uh, I was Went into hysterics. That's what the, that's, I think the cause just called us the chocolate brewers that day. <laughs> they would. That's I also what, remember that's that, it from, I also yeah. remember that nobody beat me up here at table tennis, but that's no, another, know, that's for another day. I know, but as, as I say, it's as for candy counter. Sean, you just turned sixty. Uh, your family all clubbed together and got you a lovely surprise. Uh, could you tell us? Talk to me about that. Well, when we were sent away to uh, a place called uh, Monica, out out in. Uh, Spain, it's in off one of the islands off Spain that there, you know. So as I say, it was, it was a big surprise to us and going out and me and Noe went out and we enjoyed ourselves and as I say, we never get many holidays on our own. But you know, this is obviously because of I've hit sixty, you know. Right. You know, when I hear somebody saying sixty, I'm not gonna behind me to see who, who uh -huh. the person is they're talking about. But you also went to Madison myself. Square Garden. I did, I uh, went to that street, that street, I also yeah. went to Madison Was that enough for your 60th? Did they not all club together to get you that? Well, there was two or three things, you know, yes. at that time I forgot about that one. Yeah. Right. And uh, I was to see Roy Jones. And the Mecca of Action, Madison Square Garden. And, and uh, it was Joy Jones's last fight before that, uh, Joe Kozaki's last fight. And as I say, I was out there for 10 days and uh, that was fantastic. Amazing. You know. Amazing. And you were saying to me that you were in a convenience store and you bumped into a guy, I wouldn't say he was a <sighs> hero or idol, but a guy you had so much respect in that uh -huh. place for, Straight former right. world champion, good That's fighter right. to uh, Buddy McGurk, and now right. a great trainer. Well, we were at Gracie store, without thinking, we're probably walking about Gracie store, a very dear place. Uh, not that I was going to spend any money on it because it was too dear, but to look about it there anyway, and uh, to come across it. Mm -hmm. Buddy McGurk, uh, who was a good, good fighter and trains top class world yeah. fighters now these days, you know. So I, I, man. it's the same when, when I approached him and told him who I was and actually explained to him where I come from. And then I also was doing the same thing that he does, you know, a uh, lovely fella, very humble. Yes. Just taught me to, told me to watch out for this fighter, you know, in the bill that night. Because it's the same night that Joe Gulzaki had, had he some boxers on? He had two or three fighters on it that yeah. night. And he had a good fighter on it that night, and he, well, I'll keep an eye out for him. I'll, I'll find a couple of members in the middle. Sean, as I said earlier, uh, you've produced many champions down the years, but I feel as though that's insignificant compared to the number of kids you've seen mm -hmm. from death or jail. Uh, kids are in this club training and yeah. boxing and using the facilities that made other ways have been out uh, joining paramilitaries or rioting or joyriding mm -hmm. or taking a drink or drugs and all the things that are prevalent in our society. A good boxing trainer is a, a, is also a mentor, yep. motivator, father figure, role model, mm -hmm. social worker. Yeah. And Sean, I can honestly say you're all them things. Uh, the people of Legan Eden owe you a debt of gratitude. Yep. Sean, thanks very much for speaking to BLT. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you.